Many of you liked my previous OBS settings tutorial more than I thought you would, so I decided to update it and uh, put a new twist on the settings that I used more so today than I did back then. Let's get to it. First thing you wanna do, as always with anything ever, is you want to download it. So go to the obsproject.com page, get select Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever it is for you. Go ahead and go through that process. Make sure you right click the app and run as administrator. If you do not do this, then you are not allocating sufficient sometimes memory to your GPU in order to do all the encoding tasks and blah, blah, blah. Don't skip out on this step. This has saved me a lot of headache. Another extremely important step is to go up to the help tab and come on down to check for updates. This is going to let you know whether or not you need to update to the newest version. That's very important for bug fixes and features that we talk about in these kind of videos. Now that we did all of that, quick video settings, go ahead and go to the settings tab in the, in the corner. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to video. In the video tab, your base and scaled, I would recommend to be the same. It should be the same because when you use a downscale filter, it uses more of your CPU and GPU's performance, which can mean quality can suffer and smoothness can suffer. What I would recommend, 1920 by 1080 and 1920 by 1080. Every medium can take these resolutions and it's also not terribly difficult to run on more modern hardware. If you have a 4K monitor and you really want to capture in 4K, then go for 4K and 4K but I have noticed from having a 4K monitor and also a really good computer that when I downscale 4K to something else, then it actually is more difficult to run properly and it has a lot of lag and stuff. Recommendations until you're really good at this is to keep them the same and go for like 1920 by 1080. If you have to, you can always drop down to 720. Uh, 1280 by 720, which is 720p. 60 frames per second because this is a very good, smooth performance standard that a lot of people are using. But of course, if you're not playing video games and you're just doing normal recordings, you can actually save some performance by going to 30 FPS. So don't forget to hit apply when you do things like that. Let's head over to the output tab. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your audio track one is clicked and we'll talk about that in just a moment. So just hold on for that. For most people, you're gonna to wanna to stream an H.264 NVIDIA NVENC if you have an NVIDIA card. If you do not, then of course you will do X2, X264. And in case you're wondering what X264 is, we will get to that in just a moment. My H.264 settings are as follows. I use a control rate of CBR. I also use a bit rate of about 6,000 for streaming. I like to, streaming can be a little lesser quality if long as the recording is better quality. I use a two for the keyframe interval. I also use the P4 preset, which is medium quality. I found this is the best bang for your buck, if you will, for in terms of these profiles. High quality tuning, this one's been a standard for a long time. Also, single pass mode instead of two passes. At first glance, it looks like two passes is gonna give you much better resolution because it's gonna go through it twice and make sure it's like really good quality, right? Well, Epos Fox and similar YouTubers have determined that there is really a very negligible difference between single pass and two passes for the amount of performance stress that you are now putting on your hardware. Do high profile. We're really trying to optimize the best performance ever and make sure the quality looks good. But we're not necessarily trying to make it look like the best thing in the world because if your stream's choppy, no one's gonna wanna watch you anyways. Ignore these two guys, make sure they're unchecked. Your GPU is most likely going to be zero. And the way that you check that is you open up your task manager. If you open up your task manager, you shall see there is going to be a big fat zero, a one or a two possibly after your GPU that you're wanting to use. I wanna use my 3080 Ti, so I'm gonna use GPU zero. But if you have an integrated card or an integrated graphics module on your CPU, then this may be GPU one or GPU two. And max B frames is a two. So we can head over now to the, oh, I changed it on accident. If you scroll the mouse wheel, by the way, fun fact, if you scroll the mouse wheel, you can go up and down on numbers. Crazy, right? Look at that, all these numbers. I'm gonna get that back to a two. So just be careful when you're you're scrolling the mouse wheel like I do. Now to the recording tab. If you're not seeing any of these, any of these extreme settings, then you make sure that you are going up to the output mode tab and you are hitting advanced because they will not give you this stuff on simple. They don't want you to stress with all the numbers and the calculations and stuff but it's not that hard. So just click advanced and follow the guide and we'll be good. I'm heading over to the recording tab. You're gonna leave this standard and you're gonna wanna select your recording pad. I have selected a place that I know all of my OBS recordings are gonna go straight to this folder. And so it makes it very easy to find 
and very easy to put in my editing program. Another change that you're gonna see from me that, that you're like, oh, well, you should have done this last time is the MKV, the Mastroka video. There's a really, really nice way of handling this in a setting later I'm gonna show you, so stick around. You're gonna wanna record NVIDIA NVENC HEVC if you have an NVIDIA card. Now, you're gonna ask me a question like, hey, what's what's with, why not H.264? And um, what's with all the other ones? What's this AV1 business? AV1 is only for certain graphics cards. You need a 40 series or higher NVIDIA card in the newer generations in order to run AV1 at all, or you need a Intel card. That being said, it's very efficient in coding wise and the file sizes are lower, AV1 will be here to stay. So be on the lookout for that in the coming years, I would say, when it gets more adopted by these different streaming platforms and also better integrated into graphics cards. AV1 and HVVC are very similar in the fact that they have higher quality with reduced file sizes. So they're very nice to send over bit rates and stuff over the internet at lower volumes. They're very like high intensity and very high quality versus H.264 and X.264 are kind of the older gen, like, hey, we're kind of phasing these out. They still have very big file sizes, but H.264 and X.264 are widely used in terms of what the streaming platforms like Twitch and YouTube and all them use. So you still have to kind of stick to these for streaming, but for recording, you get HEVC. Definitely recommend that. So click HEVC. You don't need to worry about custom Muxer, Muxer settings. Make sure your audio track one is enabled because that's probably where most of your audio is going to be coming through anyways. And this is where it's going to get kind of interesting. Your rate control is going to be CQP instead of CBR. Basically encodes it a little differently. I would recommend a CQ level of 20. Basically it goes up to 25 and low is, I don't even know how low it goes, but the lower you go, the more quality it is, but it also is way more stressful on your system. Uh, I find 20 to be a decent quality, uh, keeping some performance standards, but also well, looking pretty decent. I would keep it at a 20 and you can experiment going up and down, see how you fare. Keyframe interval is the same, two seconds. If you can do this, I would recommend the P5 preset on your recording side of things. You want your recordings to be a little bit better because they're going to YouTube where they're going to live permanently, unlike your streams, which are going to a live audience and they don't really care as much about your quality. I do high quality tuning, single pass, main profile. Those are the same as last time. Disable look ahead and cycle visual. GPUs is still at zero. Like I said before, you can check your task manager if you're just now tuning in and this little column down here will be GPU zero or GPU one or two, just depends on how many GPUs you have. And that GPU is, you know, your main card gonna be the one that you wanna use. So it's GPU zero. And then of course, a max of two B frames. We're gonna go over to the audio tab and we're gonna make sure that our bit rate is 256 if you can, or 192. Don't worry about replay buffer if you're new. We're just gonna skip past that. So now that I've taken you through the NVIDIA suite, let's take you through a little bit of the X264 suite. So this is where your CPU is gonna be doing the encoding for you. It's not as recommended because your GPU typically has its own encoding chip on it nowadays, and it does the processing a lot better than most CPUs do, even if you have a really nice one. But if you have to do something like this, then it's pretty much the same kind of settings, it's just a little bit lower. The bitrate on the streaming section is internet based. Most people are gonna wanna do a 4500 bitrate for internet, a two second keyframe interval, and then I would do a medium preset. You're gonna do high profile and, of and you're not gonna do any tune. And this is basically going to be your settings. Very simple, very straightforward. It's going to be the same exact settings as here. So just copy these settings and put them into the recording tab and you'll be good to go. Next important thing to do is go to the audio tab. In the audio tab, you're gonna need two little things here. One is desktop audio. You're probably gonna to wanna to put that to default. I do have a video on how to break that stuff down. I can link in the description how to make the separate audio tracks. But for now, default was probably gonna get you where you need to go. And the other thing you need to do is you need to have your mic auxiliary audio enabled to whatever mic you're using. And as soon as you do that, as an example, if I put this here and click apply, you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a mic that just appeared in the corner there. That's how you know it worked. Generally speaking, the easiest thing to do if you're unsure about what to put here in this section, like the desktop audio or the mic audio, you're gonna wanna go to your sound settings. So we'll go to sound settings and you're gonna put whatever is here. 
So for me, this input device is StreamMix A that has my mic and all that fun stuff on it. So that's why I put this in the mic spot. And for me, this is what I would put in the output spot for my desktop audio and stuff. So make sure these match up with what you're looking to do here. Hit apply. Now that you've done that, you probably wanna know how your audio sounds. Make sure this is not muted. I'm just muting it because it bugs me. But click the three dots and you'll see advanced audio properties. Click the advanced audio properties and you will see this track system on the right and you'll see audio monitoring. Now, this is really important. Make sure these are enabled, especially track one, so it can know to record those tracks. And if you wanna check how you sound, it will echo, so just be aware of that. But if you wanna check how you sound, then you can hit the audio monitoring and you can do monitor and output. This will basically, when you talk, it will feed back through whatever device you have that you're listening in on. That could be, you know, headphones, that could be your speakers, whatever it is. This will let you know how you sound, which is really helpful for when you get into the nitty gritty of the actual mic filters and stuff, which I do have a video about in the description. Feel free to check that out to make your mic sound awesome. This is how you would help check some of that stuff. This will help you get your sources synced up to your audio in your video if you're having trouble with that like if your lips are moving but it's not making sense with the words you would need to add some time here some milliseconds here to hopefully bring the sources back in line with each other now if you can't hear anything you did the monitor and output and you can't hear a darn thing then it's also important to double check in the settings back to the audio tab that you have this monitoring device to something that you can actually hear through. It may say default, and that may not be the thing that you need to hear from. So make sure that you hit like headphones here or a speaker or whatever it is that you have that you can monitor your voice from. As a preview to my mic settings video that you should definitely check out later, here's how to set up a noise suppression filter. Very easy. You just click these three dots, click filters, and then you set the plus sign, and then you can just do a noise suppression. Call it noise suppression. <laughs> and you could do RNN noise or RN noise. Basically, it will automatically take in the sounds that you are having in your environment and it will do its best to suppress them out. This is the easier way of doing it. You could do a manual sort of way, but I'm not gonna go into that. I'm also not gonna go into these other filters like a compressor and equalizer. All this stuff is a lot more advanced and definitely has been its own video before. So definitely check out the video that I've mentioned. It'll be in the description below. It's the mic settings video. You'll be good to go. Another really helpful thing is actually in the settings, it's called hotkeys. Hotkeys are really nice because whether you do or do not have this little handy dandy thing called a stream deck, which are pretty expensive and sort of unnecessary, but they are nice to have. If you don't have one of those devices, then you can easily just set up keyboard shortcut hotkeys in here, which could be like plus sign or minus sign for start recording, stop recording, could be like F8 or F9. And this will help you do things on your keyboard without having to awkwardly, you know, all right, hold on everybody. I gotta just, I gotta click off the game real quick and I need to go over here and I need to switch my scene. This will help you do that a lot faster and a lot smoother. Two more things and we are done. This is really important, especially if you're using the MKV settings that we talked about earlier, the, the file format. You wanna go down to the recording section of advanced and remux to MP4. This is gonna save you a lot of headache in case you forget this will handle it as soon as you stop recording. As soon as you stop recording, it will automatically turn it into an MP4. It'll save it in the same spot most likely and you can just get it and throw it into your video program. Super easy. There's not really anything else here that we care about except for maybe enable browser source hardware acceleration. But other than that, not a big deal. The other thing too is of course the stream tab. Now the stream tab I saved for last because it's probably like one of the easiest. For Twitch, you can literally just find Twitch in your service, click it, and you can connect account. That's easy. If you want to do YouTube, you can do it. You can click the YouTube here. Now, if you want to stream to something like Kick, Kick doesn't have an official OBS integration as of, I don't know, 29.5 or whatever this is. So you're gonna wanna do custom and you're gonna have to go to Kick, put in the server and the stream key that they give you. I have a video that I'm making currently, so it probably, it'll probably it probably be out soonish after this one, where I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So stay tuned, subscribe and all that fun stuff if you wanna know how to set up a Kick streaming account. I recommend you do that, by the way, because I'm actually releasing another piece in probably about a month uh, where we're gonna break down Twitch versus Kick and like how this really came to be because there's a lot of fun, mysterious things about Kick uh, that you may or may not know. Be on the lookout for those next couple videos uh, by subscribing and we'll have them out to you. I think they're gonna be fun. 
that you're gonna enjoy them. But anyways, this is where you would put that stuff for kick and any other streaming platform that doesn't already have listed in the show all category. I hope this updated video helped you again, just like it did six to eight months ago. If you haven't checked out that previous video, it could still be helpful to you. I would recommend that it'll be in the description below. But otherwise, in the corners here, we have a mic filters video to help you clean up that nasty audio you probably have. And also we have a free overlays video, which you guys have really been loving as well. So make sure to check those two videos out and I'll see you in the next one. Let's keep learning together.